MPs from both houses uh, had to lodge their uh, citizenship declarations. And so now we have Labour MPs, uh, Josh Wilson, Justine Key, David Feeney, Susan Lamb, along with uh, Senator Katie Gallagher, are referred to the High Court. And also uh, Nick Xenophon team uh, MP Rebecca Sharkey has also uh, been referred to the High Court. Now, Labour and the crossbench uh, in the lower house tried to move that Liberal MPs, uh, Julia Banks, Jason Flinsky, Alex Hawke and Nola Marino be also referred to the High Court and uh, the, uh, the government, uh, they were lucky that uh, Barnaby Joyce's uh, re-election uh, to uh, New England was exhilarated. He uh, was able to return uh, to the Parliament on uh, Wednesday, only a few days after the by-election. So they had the numbers on the floor of the Parliament again and they were able to uh, defeat Labour's uh, motion to refer their MPs to the High Court. And it seems that they did this uh, basically because uh, Julia Banks, who suspected she might have Greek citizenship, she's in a marginal seat in Victoria, Chisholm, which she, um, she actually won off the Labour Party at the last election because uh, uh, the former Speaker, Anna Burke, retired. And given the, the polls as they are at the moment, uh, they would be guaranteed to, to lose that seat. Um, you know, and, and it's clear, like, the, the citizenship declarations were supposed to, you know, clear once and for all, uh, you know, who was eligible to sit there and not. But, uh, you know, the parties, they're still playing politics and there is still largely a protection racket in place. I mean, Labor claimed for months that their processes were thorough and, you know, all their MPs would be fine. But you know, they're obviously exposed yet again. And, you know, Bill Shorten, um, you know, has been, you know, left red faced. It seems like a, an issue that both parties have been playing politics with and that they're not really serious about. They've just been uh, holding off and uh, trying to um, make political uh, points on the other team and make sure that they've, you know, gotten them, uh, that they've uh, been the ones to have members uh, put forward to the high court and that they were safe and, you know, trying to, um, it's just a, a big, a big game, really. Yes, I mean, Ch Chisholm's definitely going to go. I mean, um, no question asked. Uh, it's, it's an electorate that's really holding on uh, as a marginal. And, um, yeah, under, under circumstances of a by-election, they'll be gone. Um, so, you know, th this is definitely going to affect um, the party. I mean, the, the, what, a, what an issue, really, that, that, that it's, it's ruined lives, uh, so to speak, amongst so many uh, politicians. But... This is what happens when people don't uh, really read into things and, and follow the, the laws, whether you agree with them or not. I mean, that, that is uh, the, the current um, circumstance that we're in. And uh, it seems that people, when they uh, put themselves as candidates, don't actually really read into things properly. And, uh, and this is what happens. And, I mean, we could only imagine that if the first uh, um, candidate um, that was a Green that uh, went forward and actually brought this issue up, then uh, if he never did, then we may be in a situation where uh, who knows how many years it would have taken for, for the issue to come up at all. <laughs> uh, David Feeney is obviously the uh, Labour MP who's uh, embarrassed the, the party in the, the biggest way, given that he claims that he renounced his uh, British and Irish citizenship when he first ran for uh, the Senate in 2007. Uh, but mm. the only problem is now that is that he can't find the the, the paperwork. It's been uh, it's been called the you know the dog ate my homework uh, excuse. And imagine <laughs> how the you know the High Court is going to view that. Now, obviously, you know David Feeney. This is not his first uh, stuff up during last year's uh, federal election. He forgot to declare that he had a, a two million uh, dollar investment property and also during that camp campaign he uh, didn't know the difference between the baby bonus and the school kids bonus and so didn't know Labour's mm. policy mm. on them and not only that he left uh, confidential uh, Labour briefing papers uh, behind uh, from a media conference so I dub him you know forgetful Feeney mm. now he survived this long like Dastiari because he um, it is a major power broker in Victoria, um, mm -hmm. but, but it's interesting that uh, even uh, even now, um, you know, the the rest of the uh, uh, Labour people in Victoria, they've uh, given this uh, you know 
for getting his paperwork, they finally, you know, crack the shits with him. And, you know, mm. if they do have to go to a by-election, because he's in the inner Melbourne seat of Batman, which takes in mm-hmm. the state uh, seat of Northcote, which the, the Greens recently won at a by-election. Uh, if that, if mm. that went to a by-election, there's, you know, uh, more likely than not, the, the Greens would win it. Uh, because liberals are not uh, would not run who would be able to deliver the Labor Party uh, preferences, and I don't think the voters that uh, uh, Batman would really want to vote back here and the the guy who um, you know for, forced them back to the polls because he couldn't find his paperwork. Yeah, it's a very uh, inconvenient situation, isn't it? Uh, the the old paperwork story. Um, <laughs> But this is what happens when people are unorganised as such, you know. I just um, He's really a dud candidate. And, I mean, you you actually look at the record. Labor's held the seat for for a long, long time. I mean, um, apart from a couple of years of being an independent, it wasn't since the 30s that they, they didn't hold the seat. I mean, it's a strong Labor seat. But with the Greens vote uh, being um, so much that it is, I mean, the Greens actually polled uh, higher... Labor in the primary vote by about a percentage point, but after preferences just crossed the line on a 51% margin. I mean, there's no doubt that he'll be gone after this if he was to uh, if he was to uh, be in a by election, and um, he would definitely lose. I mean, the, the Greens are, are making roads here. Uh, they they won uh, the Brisbane seat, obviously Maywa, and um, they'll definitely gain this one as well. It, um, it's very shocking and. How Labor's going to actually be able to cope with it is um, is something that they're going to have to deal with. Malcolm Turnbull, he is finishing the year on a high. I mean, like he's obviously pleased that you know he you know got his you know precious same sex marriage uh, through. Mm. But there's also a lot of other people uh, in the government who are pleased that this issue is you know off the uh, agenda. And uh, given that, um, you know, after, you know, there was the, the George Christensen threat, the, the big guns came out to defend Malcolm Turnbull's leadership, obviously Barnaby Joyce on New England uh, by-election night, you know, said, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, working with, you know, um, this bloke. And obviously John Howard, you know, was a big intervention mm. saying, you know, liberals need to mm. stick with uh, Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, yeah, I, do, I, I, I don't hold much hope that, you know, Malcolm Turnbull has the capacity to turn it around, but it does look mm-hmm. like his his leadership is secure going into the to, to the new year. So you know, I don't yeah. I don't yeah. think Shorten's going to be you know riding high for you know up until the next election. Yeah, I, I believe Turnbull is safe too, and um, there really isn't any um, alternative to go to because even though there's many uh, great contenders in the Liberal Party. There could uh, possibly be a, um, a leadership uh, contender or a prime minister in future. Um, people don't want to continue seeing these leadership changes at all, and it doesn't. It only does damage to them. I mean, it was wrong for Turnbull to toss Abbott out in the first place um, in 2013, and we've actually seen that Turnbull at, at current is doing a lot worse than Abbott ever did. But um, people um, will think worse of it if he was replaced with somebody else, even if they were better, because the party has a stain on it. It's nothing to do or not entirely to do with the leadership, as bad as a leader might be, but it's the brand, you know, it's the brand that that, uh, needs reforming, that um, people need to start trusting again, rather than just the leader. I mean, um, because it's a team effort. It's not just to do with the leader. And um, as bad as a leader is, um, there's also treasurers, there's immigration ministers, there's people that are, um, are putting out policies out there that are affecting the people. So Turnbull is safe, and I think he will be the leader next election because I don't think it would be a, um, a positive for the Liberal Party to switch at all, given um, it doesn't work in their favour, as it didn't work in their favour last time when they did it to Abbott, and we've seen a decline in the party ever since. Um, so really, it's um, it, the next election is really um, looking to be a shortened victory accordingly, um, unless something really scandalous or, or something terrible happened in the Labor Party. It's going to be a very cruisy sort of uh, win for them, I think. This has been an Unshackled Fast. Please like, comment and subscribe. While you're here, grab our free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And visit theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.